He's in Missouri, 118 and 81. Tonight's first half tip-off sponsored by Petty Jean Meats. Monica with a good, strong move inside. Bank is no good, but Darian Towns is there to tap it back in. Well, there you see Darkin. And they're uh, even for the year, but you watch him on film, they're making a strong effort on those boards that Arkansas can take lightly. Oh, good look inside, and Young is up to no good luck. Drafted, got bad advice. Gardner hits the three. First of the fight from the talent of that kid had. Hogs on a 10-1 run up until that three. So it's a 10-4 run. Modic on the wing. Wow. Now Aaron Lyons is going to go take it to the slam. Young really battling. There's a three by Lawrence. Very good offense by Missouri. Time show is next. You're watching Arkansas Razorback basketball. Battle under the boards, and it's won by Kevin Young. He gets his second. And Missouri Andrews. Arkansas snuck in at the end and got a good one. Basket by Gardner. Got a big block. There's a three by Lawrence. And 25 seconds on that shot clock. Basket's going to count. Back below. Wide open there three is. is up and it's good. That time they attacked this goes with the ball game. Wow. Running jumper. And this ball game is brand new. Oh, my. Wow. I'll tell you what. Horton lit it up. Jefferson working against Horton. Drew with a long three. Got it. The Hogs are up. Oh, goodness. My golly. Horton with nine. All of his points on threes. And Missouri's leading by one. Towns into the key. Turn around jumper. Won't go. Monica with a bottle. And he's fouled on the play. Clean up a missed free throw for Arkansas, but he's out of the game. There it is. Oh, man. There it is. Tipped back in by Young. He has 13. Missouri to hit a three-point shot. Look at this again. You've got to be kidding me. There's the three. Wow. And there's the ball game. Arkansas. Well, they had a shot at it. Arkansas didn't win. They survived. Again, Young comes in off of the Saw Razorback Sports Network. Classic Missouri looking to make it, uh, hoping to avoid its sixth straight loss, I should say, to Illinois. Deep Brown, the three-pointer there behind the James Augustine screen. It was all Illinois left. One of the quickest, cat-quick teams in the country as we see Augustine go the length of the court. Defense creates offense for the Illini, gets them out in the open court, holding opponents to 40% from the field and beating them by 16 a game because of solid D and sharing the ball on O. Well, they win this one by 32 points, 82 to 50. It is the biggest win in the history of this rivalry. 36 games between Illinois and Missouri all time. 32 points is the largest margin. And it kind of begs the question, Rick, I mean, with the loss to Sam Houston State earlier this year, you've got two straight 16 win seasons with first round NIT exits for Missouri. What's the future of this Missouri program? Well, number one, the players have to accept a shared sense of responsibility here. They've got sticky fingers. They're holding the ball a little bit too long. They're not getting back in transition D. They've got to get on the floor for loose balls. Now, you got to understand something. It's a partnership among coaches and players. But my colleague here, Steve Lavin, lost to Stanford by 48, won the Pac-10 that year, and went to the Elite Eight. I want to tell you something. There's a lot of ball to be played yet. These players have to muster it within themselves in conjunction with the coaching staff. Well, you know, Lav, obviously Rick brings up a point. I mean, you've been through this before. You've been the coach on the hot seat, much in the way that Quinn Snyder is right now. What does it do to you as a coach and to your players? 
Well, the challenge for Quinn Snyder is the fact that it creates a situation where you almost feel immobilized or paralyzed in terms of recruiting, in terms of motivation, because there's so much uncertainty and speculation about your job security, and that makes it extremely challenging. But his number one priority is to continue to teach and coach on a daily basis, stay focused, lead by example. He's still the man in charge who has his hand on the thermostat that creates the culture, and they have to stay on the path of improvement, the path of progress. That's easier said than done when there is such speculation. Today, with the media, the internet, talk radio, chat rooms, it is very difficult to recruit, to motivate your kids, because they're naturally listening to all this speculation and uncertainty. So a very difficult, challenging time. And I agree with Rick. I think right now, other than Thomas Gardner, it's a very uh, thin team, not very explosive, not a lot of weapons on this Missouri team. They're getting very little production out of their bench. Really, Gardner at 22 a game is the only one they can count on. McKinney a little bit shaky with his shot selection, only shooting 38% from the field. And you saw the natives getting restless. I don't know if you guys saw on the way out, Quinn Snyder getting popcorn poured on him. So yeah, that's uh, unacceptable. That really is unacceptable how, behavior, right? no matter how bad it yeah. gets. But Myra, things are yeah. really ugly right now for Mizzou, and, and specifically for Quinn Snyder. No time to stop and smell the roses. He's too busy leading the Big 12 in scoring. And tonight, this gardener hopes to harvest a great crop against the Sooners. We welcome you to Norman, Oklahoma, where tonight at the Lloyd Noble Center, this Big 12 matchup featuring the 22nd ranked Sooners of Oklahoma and the Tigers of Missouri. Hi again, everyone. I'm Dave. Offense, you got to talk about the guards. These two guys, very complimentary players to their different styles. Thomas Gardner, he's a guy that can kill you from the outside, shooting 45% from three. But Jimmy McKinney's ability to put the ball down and get in the lane really sets him apart from Thomas Gardner. 23 points against Oklahoma State. You know, when you look at Gardner, though, the key to his game each and every season, and more so this year, is shot selection. His ability to spot up from the outside really can open up the interior for Missouri. No Taylor will play their first conference games tomorrow, and in the case of the Bears, it's their first game of the year. For the Missouri Tigers tonight, here is how they look with Brown, Watkins, Young, McKinney, and Quinn Snyder, the seventh year guiding these Tigers. 124 wins, 81 of those at home. What about his keys to this game? Well, they've got a team trying to take another stride here tonight against Oklahoma. These two teams go a long way back. In fact, you look at this. This is the 202nd meeting between these two. Coach Sampson has a good record against the Tigers, although here, a couple of years, the last five meetings between these two clubs. So Oklahoma dressed in their home white jerseys, and it's Missouri in their road black. We're all set to go, and it's the Sooners with the ball. Gardner, nice contested jumper. Boy, tough shot there, Thomas Gardner. Gardner just comes right up. Godbold loses the handle initially, and Johnson doesn't help him out. Nice catch, though, by Marcus Watkins on the other end. That was just a bullet pass by Thomas Gardner trying to get it through. But assistance. There he is. Uh, Quinn Snyder has really had a lot of experience on his staff. He's got some guys now out there that have coached. On the glass, five guys get on the boards and get somebody off. Heads up play by Gardner. They find Brown. And he got it to go. Tried for the jam, kind of short stepped that a little bit, but still the ball goes. No, inside. When he catches the ball, you know, if he's looking to score, he's going to catch it in his spot. He doesn't have a league that matches up with him size-wise, and he's out on the floor right now. Kevin Young at 270 as well. McKinney able to hit both free throws, and the Tigers are on a roll right now as they lead seven for the Tigers. Take a moment to thank our Big 12. It was the offense. The offense dictated the defense. McKinney four points all from the line tonight. And Mizzou stretches that lead to five. Still going over five minutes. Well, in Oklahoma, we've got to mention as well, has Michael Neal sitting on the bench. Really, their best outside scoring option. Pulled a groin muscle. Has missed the last couple of games. Thomas Gardner again. A wide open. Shot clock down to six. Dandridge flashing down the paint. Really good look from Horton. Nice look from Horton, but a great recognition by Dandridge. Seen any? Uh, yeah, I, know, you know, I was going to say something. To give it away. Oh, nice, nice play off the timeout. Good look, Thomas Gardner. Sets it up, gets the pick in the interior. The home team has bought into the defensive principles that Kelvin Sampson liked to see so far this season. 
Brown. That three-pointer is good. Boy, Marshall Brown's come to life. And Mizzou back on top by three. Well, good recognition. And if they can't, if they miss the shot, you're in position. But if you go for the block shot, all you're going to do is keep yourself outmanned on the offensive boards. Marshall Brown's feeling it right now. His third straight basket for the Tigers there by Oklahoma. They swing the ball from side to side, make that defense work from the whole entire shot clock, and then take a shot that's open. Not bad offense there by Oklahoma. You all that coming up on the Nissan halftime report from Studio 66. You could probably take into that on the trip here and thinking, how do you decide? I mean, you know, when you really look back at the last 10 years of all the quality players, guys now playing in the NBA, what's going to happen? Who, what team is going to show up? What player is going to be there that particular night? Gardner has been one consistent force, especially scoring. But outside of Gardner, there really isn't any other consistent player for the Tigers. Three minutes of that game. Struggled early in the season, shooting slump. Start to put it together a little bit more now. That ball hits a three. And the Sooners have their for December from the three-point line. <laughs> Missed 16 straight threes at oh, one man. point. Oh, how tough is that? That'll silence the crowd here as Thomas Gardner hits one with a hand. It was the penetration. Now watch. Oklahoma just late coming out on Thomas Gardner. The scout says make him put the ball on the floor. And Nate Carter late coming over to beat Syracuse that year. And it had been a Texas-Kansas matchup in the finals. Wouldn't that have been? Then you know you've got it made. Plenty of time. Gardner looked up at that clock and said, oh, I can beat the clock. No problem. And that's the way the first half comes to a close as Gardner scores five straight points for the Tigers to pull them within one. And Gardner, the leading scorer with a dozen first half points. So Thomas Gardner's efforts with a dozen half, uh, first half points able to help Missouri stay in this contest. Oh, he's contest. So we're all taking a seat watching this one and applauding as the Sooners and the Tigers are within one of each other as we head to halftime. Today didn't play much in that first half. Here's the first half highlights brought to you by Shelter Insurance. Well, Missouri helped, or Oklahoma helped Missouri out quite a bit with turnovers themselves. Thomas Gardner getting in there, but, you know, really uncharacteristic basketball for Oklahoma. Struggling on the offensive end, trying to make something happen against a Missouri defense that was packed inside. But it's really the Thomas Gardner show in the first half for Missouri. 12 points. He's really showing something here tonight. Tough shots against pretty good defense. Getting a hand up in his face. Really not making him take it all the way to the basket, laying off a little bit, but here he finally gets inside the paint. Showing... Gray! Wow! Oh. one was with authority. Watch Terrell Everett setting it up. David Godbold's underneath. You don't see him, and then clear the way. The big fella's coming through. The back's feeling better. Look at him spacing it out. Defense thinking he's going to Godbold, but... Got a big fella behind. Look at that. He takes off and floats. And big for Missouri to try and get something going at the basket offensively. Don't let Oklahoma continue on this run. Young powers his way in. Nice move by Kevin Young. Better job. That you want to score over the top of somebody. you got to use that strength and get by. Just gets a shoulder on the big fella, Kevin Bookout, pushing him out enough to be able to find himself underneath the basket. And that's where Kevin Young can score. Fallen book out his first. And Young completes the old fashioned three point play. To pull the Tigers within four. Meant the one you were not giving credit for one because he didn't call glass. That's what it was. Right? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I re I'm sitting there looking at one for four. I thought I said one for four. Sorry. On back to back possessions. Well, I cannot remember an Oklahoma team being that lackadaisical with the ball. And again, Gardner able to get loose in the corner. And so Gray becomes the first Sooner to go into double figures. He's got 11. Three-pointer is wide open and good for the freshman out of St. Louis, Matt Lawrence. 10 from three-point range. Well, and you take out the first two games, and they're actually at 27% on the season. They started hot, hadn't been able to shoot very well since that point. And a good play called by Quinn Snyder. Godbold tries a three, and there's Brown. Not one touch by a big guy inside until then. And then perhaps Griffin tried to do too much. Lawrence, good tip in by Young. And the Tigers have surged back in front. 
So oh, Young just does all the dirty work. Now Missouri's getting back in this game here in the second half after that early run by the three from the outside. And Gardner able to find Matt Lawrence here. He got the double team inside. The fresh 11 offensive rebounds for the Sooners tonight. 11. Gardner can't get it to go, but a nice tip in inside by Brown. Now give Marshall Brown credit there, sticking with the point. McKinney. Tough fall away jumper. And back to back tough shots for Missouri. They come out of that one, though. Glenn Dandridge coming up with the junk underneath. So Missouri. Loose balls. Who comes up with them generally dictates the end of the game, but uh, or the outcome of the game. Glenn Dandridge coming up with that. Junk there underneath. Brown from the wing. Got Book out in the air. Tough fadeaway. Got it. What a tough shot by Marshall Brown. Nice move, and that's what he's got to be able to develop. Sooners, remember, had a five-point lead with 40 seconds to go last Saturday in Lincoln. And how about that? Gardner hits another three. This tonight. He hasn't been one of six all year long. But that'll be goaltend on Gray. And we've got a tie ball game at the 5-4. Horton getting down through the lane. And here comes Taj Gray. Ooh, that's a tough one. I think Taj Gray kind of surprised you. Watch Thomas Gardner here. Just going to back up, go right over the top. Taj Gray trying to give him a little bit of space. So now Gardner will shoot three free throws. Oklahoma 14 to 17 from the free throw. I love Taj Gray getting to the line so often. Shoots. With that free throw to 9 of 12 shooting from the line tonight. And a chance to tie it with a clock stop here, Chris. Do you just have to play out and forget the fact you have four fouls? Yeah, he can't play the game worrying about fouls. He's got to just play the same way. Don't worry about that fifth. I don't think that if Missouri is young, one of one so far. Big fellas had a nice game here. Got Taj Gray and Kevin Book out in there again. Playing now with four fouls, Young. Able to get his ninth point of the game. Carter, we talked about the great defense he's played on Jimmy McKinney tonight. Another free throw made by the Missouri type up and made it. And whoever wins this game might be able to say free throws won us the game. And we're tied again. The one time here. Give him a chance. Three, no good. Gardner, there's Brown. Wow, Marshall Brown. Well, the two guys that have been keeping Missouri in this game. Look at it, wide open. Couldn't ask for a better shot than that. But how about Marshall Brown? Second half, active on the offensive boards, getting high above it, and then doing a nice job. And for a second there, it looked like. And that one able to go as well. Substance. Kenny, who has struggled all night long, just one of seven, here out with a bang. Well, watch a little spin move, then stop, and pop over the top. But the thing about Jimmy McKinney is, I think he started to realize it's senior year. It's time for me to. Perfect. Tied at 69. Now, Missouri, shot clock is turned off. They can go for the last shot of the game. And they're going to hold it out there and do just that. Well, let's see if Quinn Snyder elects to continue to go. This is really a situation where you just attack the defense. Don't let the defense have a timeout to get set up. And give it to Thomas Gardner. Give it back. High pick and roll. Let's see what happens. Almost stolen by Everett. McKinney scrambling. Brown foul. With 1.8 seconds remaining, Marshall Brown will go to the line. Boy, how about this play? I mean, let's, we're going to have to watch this two or three times to figure out everything that happened in this play. Watch this sequence. Pretty good defense. Almost a steal initially. Now, crowd wanting to travel here. Jimmy McKinney doesn't come all the way up. And then the foul on the shot. And I think Oklahoma just trying to get out of the way in that situation, but now two games back-to-back. -back, Oklahoma having trouble. It'd be more definitive for there them. Take, check out the right toe, see if he ever slides that over. Nope, he backs, pulls yeah. it back. That's three-shot foul. It is. 
So Marshall Brown with only 1.8 seconds to go. It's going to be real tough for the Sooners. They're going to have to throw up a desperation three. Toughest one is the first one. Again, Brown having a great night. 19 points. Missed one. He's got two more tries. Yeah, to, you know, to me, the first one's the toughest one because you kind of get in the range. Now he got it. Now he gets a little bit looser. Got the second. Willed that one home. Yeah, he squeaked that one over. Just <laughs> snuck it over that He's, front rim. And he squeaked it. Quinn Snyder wants to take a full timeout here to talk things over. Kelvin set for him at all, but hey, we've seen a lot of crazy finishes. This game's still not over. Not at all. At 1.8, it's a scary number for the Tigers. Remember UCLA. Brown able to hit them both, and now the Sooners with one last-ditch effort. Everett, half-court shot, and that will do it. The Sooners start off conference play 0-2, and, and they're hearing it from some of their fans here. Padre gave it all he had here tonight, but it wasn't enough as the Sooners lose back-to-back -back games, losing in the last six seconds at Nebraska and losing tonight on some free throws by Marshall Brown with 1.8 seconds to go. But how about the Missouri Tigers and Quinn Snyder? His team starts off 2-0, beating Oklahoma State in Oklahoma. Unbelievable performance. I mean, Quinn Snyder's a guy. This whole program needs something good to happen. 9-4 now, 2-0. Got to be pretty happy the way they finish the game. They certainly should be, as Thomas Gardner had 21 points tonight, helped out in a big way by Marshall Brown, who also had 21. So a big win for the Missouri Tigers, who have now won five straight games. And that's why Quinn Snyder is applauding. His Tigers are 9-4, and, and more importantly, 2-0 in the Big 12. For Chris Piper and our entire crew here in Norman, Oklahoma. Dave Armstrong saying so long. This has been a presentation of ESPN Plus. A highway and the love of basketball. It's just over 170 miles from Lawrence, Kansas to Columbia, Missouri, but it's 180 degrees difference in the hearts of their fans. Kansas and Missouri battle next. Students are here, the Antlers. It's Mohawk and Dress Night as the Jayhawks are in town. 10 and 5 of the season against the Missouri Tigers, 9 and 5. And let's take a look at the conference standings. And boy, we're early, but I'll tell you, a lot of close numbers getting up there. 2 and 1, Mizzou and Kansas. And Star Starwatch. Brandon Rush, brother, younger brother of Mizzou great. Kareem Rush leads the Jayhawks in scoring. Thomas Gardner leads the Big 12. He has doubled it. Will jump it up for KU and for Missouri, big number 14, Kevin Young, the 6'9 senior out of Kingston, Jamaica. Our referee, Steve Wellmer, prepares to toss it in the air and it'll go to the Missouri Tigers. Jimmy McKinney will play the point, Jason Horton will for the visitors from Kansas, Robinson. Chalmers, Rush, Moody, and Kahn at for Missouri. The coach of the Tigers, Quinn Snyder, of course, played his uh, college basketball at Duke seventh season here at the helm in Columbia. Four and ten against these Kansas Jayhawks. Now, Sasha Khan picked up the foul to his first and the team's first. I'm talking about after three or four games, we're talking about almost through the middle of the season, and that's exactly what he's done. Over 20 points of ball game. Knocks down the second one as well. Full court pressure, again, a variety. They want to do early tonight. Speaking to Missouri, and you see Young scoring. They want to get him the ball early and often. They want him to have Brown, but on the follow, McKinney switches it. Ron, he might be the best post-up player. California, that was played at Kemper Arena. Back into early December. Brown along the baseline. And Khan, I believe, fouled him. Eight cheeseburgers ago, <laughs> and it's probably closer to 290 that he weighs. But yet he has excellent feet. Very light. Well, not a lot of high school football in Kingston, Jamaica. No. <laughs> you could have been a box player. Uh, uh, up and uh, a few words of... Uh, of encouragement for Vern Harris, the official three-pointer. Gardner way outside. And much, much more cut. Young back out on the wing and McKinney for three. Ron McKinney and Gardner averaging 20 apiece in the Big 12. See the double team as Giles came out. 
Here's Brown into the lane, short jumper got it. Well, Marshall Brown had to beat a very good Michigan team three yep. times that season. And also, uh, our director tonight, Derek Mobley, is, uh, is a Hoosier. Guy doesn't see it yet. Once on the floor, twice. Brown with the left hand, not there. Young in the wow. rebound. And that shows the huge. That is the largest ever for a starting pitcher in his first year of salary arbitration. Happened again, my man. Great job as usual. The young fellow at the line, Leo Lyons. Leo Criswell is how he came to this school. That's his spot out on top. Gardner. No call. Score speed. Easy two. Oh, I thought that was solid defense. Jackson right there. He needs to be a muscle man inside. Strong to the hoop at the other end is Marshall Brown. Sophomore out of Austin. Unless it goes under 15. Gardner. Gardner. Oh, oh. Thought it was going to bring the next moisture here <laughs> to the county. Do not. We're tied. At Chalmers. He has the skill level to beat you off the dribble and then the quick release before Robinson can react. You know, they score. Easy two points that happened time and time again Saturday against K State. Gardner. 18 first half points. This is a guy that struggled. There's four. plenty of time on the shot clock. It's down to 12. Gardner yep. got it. It's very difficult to close out from the middle of the lane out to the lineup. Thomas goes up. Will not get it off. Would not have counted had it gone. Thomas Gardner, 20 points, 7 of 11, and 4 of 8, 50% from beyond the arc. Second half. Brown, the lob inside. Kevin Young, not much you can do. A 290 pounder and give the assist. Nice job. The Tigers and the Jayhawks. Mob. Marshall Brown. They had good coaching out of a timeout. And a good hook by Rush. The bouncer inside to Young. Of a three -point play. Kevin Young cannot make a move in the Young with a three-point play. Made a good point today, Ron. You know, the Young on fire this week. Big games against Notre Dame and Cincinnati. Thomas Gardner again. He's a lead change that we've had in the ballgame. Just inside the three-point line. Dandridge left alone. Three-pointer. Dandridge came to Missouri himself but he should a couple of monster blocks Gardner they move right by him wow. allowed him to step through and swish it now just keep your eye on number three in the white oh, and Hawkins slipped that? down and he got the three that time a slip four possibly personal McKinney falling Ooh. away Whoa. It off the glass. now they're going to give him two with the back jump of his shot he was beyond the line in the first half ron Watch very this. good at the fadeaway whoa 17. feet were those screens which hawkins is going to have to do mckinney way outside wow. that's the second score we talked about jimmy well i love his hands chalmers knocked it away moody got it back to chalmer and the alley I love Mario Chalmers' hands. He continues to get better. Over the last four or five games, his defense is... And Kevin Young, number 14. Assistant coach's son, Melvin Watkins, transfer from Texas A&M. Full court pressure now. Jimmy, a, a team player all the way. Very unselfish. And remember, he's had 48 points, two away from tying his high water mark, which he's done twice at 30. And now he needs one point to tie his. Looked over at Steve Welburn and said, Whoa, he's Kelp Chalmers. Off to Moody. Got away a little bit with the push. Yep, sure did. Pretty good at keeping his balance. And the clock is at six. Chalmers holds up. Free throw line. 
scores it. Chalmers is going to get a shot and usually a good look. And again, he so muffed the ball playing the two spot. The Missouri drought, no field goals in the last seven minutes and 40 seconds. Look, he has put on a show in the last two games. Doesn't want to come in anyway because if he comes in on the second make, he'll come in to set up the press, which is exactly what he's doing. If you're Missouri, gets it inside to rush, put it on the floor, stolen by the Tigers. McKinney is they battle for it and a held ball, or did they get timeout? And they did. Dandridge for three. That's an air ball, tipped around. McKinney, press and foul now. Try to trap. Press and foul. Five-point ball game. 0.4 seconds away from finding out. Christian Moody misses the first. Sartori with the clock where you have to shoot some threes. Got the second one. And Bill Self wants it. And 15 lead changes. But right now, clock running very quickly if you're Quinn Snyder. Gardner wow. got it. And it's a new career high for him. That is a tough shot. And if you think that's luck, he has been doing that all season long. Defense is good. You see the switch by Rush, but he gets it off so quickly. And he's off balance, but turns and squares in the air. Chalmers missed. Chalmers looking for point number 19, and he got it. But McKinney, 20 seconds, drives it to the hoop, gets the two-pointer. No timeout is called. They're going to press earlier. Chalmers is the man that they will foul. They call a jump ball. Okay. Now, you still don't need a three if you can get an easy two. The three should only come trapping first. There's the trap. You don't have to foul right away. And Brown comes over and ties it up. Could have been a foul called on Horton, but you still have time to score to two, set up your press and foul. McKinney drives to the hoop. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. what happens when you don't settle for the bad three they got McKinney on the run great timeout he's got to make the free throw keep your eye on Jimmy McKinney he gets to the basket draws the contact and then rush fouls over the back very very good comeback game shooting one There, ball tipped out, taken by KU by Robinson, and he was fouled. Well, McKinney, an 80% foul shooter, came up short. They almost tipped it out. Getting an earful as well. Okay, here they go. They're setting it up for the three. Garner. It's there. It's it there. It is there. Seconds down to three. Chalmers inside. Moody is fouled. Moody was fouled. Now, was he fouled before time had run out? I think he was. The, the light didn't come on until after the contact. Okay, watch the three again. He's done it all year. Great look. Where is the transition defense? They don't need to set up a press because they've tied it. Nobody gets back and gets Moody. McKinney fouled him, but he was fouled. And it's my mistake, Ron, because four tenths now, everybody will be on the line. Yeah. Christian Moody for two. Point four seconds left. Missed the first one. Okay. Kansas can still get the tip. And now the reason Kevin Young is... Well, Kansas has gone big, but C.J. Giles does not want a foul on a missed free throw. 
Moody with one more. Time to win it by breaking the tie. On the way. He missed it. Young with the rebound, and we're going to overtime. Ron, I took my headsets off, and I don't remember ever being in a louder building in 25 years. They were down by nine with a minute and 50 seconds to play. That you remember kidding. Here's Gardner. Record night for him, and he gets two more. 34 points. His career best right. She's four or five from the free throw line. We'll check his rebounds uh, here in just a second. Gets out of the go down. He has been instrumental in Missouri now to make sure you have Gardner on the floor as much as possible when you have the ball. Young gets the second one. Second one on the way. In and out unlucky, but the tip going to be taken down by Rush. Robinson, left-handed dribble, kisses it off the glass. And guess who tipped it out, Ron? Moody. Robinson. Kenny gets the first. Syracuse, UConn coming up next. They are underway at the carrier dome. Gardner. Off the ground for the slam. It's Missouri back on top. Well, Thomas Gardner occupies a lot of blue. And that's why Marshall Brown on the baseline. Watch the drive. But as he picks up the dribble, knocks it cleanly to Brown, who finishes it. So the foul. Every time he puts one up there. That we wondered if he had 20 more points. He scored 20 in the first hit. But he's given us an answer as he switches the first one. He was so mediocre a year ago. You just were trying to break the tie with 61 seconds left in overtime. And he does. Tied today at the shoot around. Right. Turned around, left all alone, and he put one up way too strong. Gardner on the rebound. And Missouri can make it a three, if not a four-point lead then, here. Bill Self wants a foul. Everybody in this arena is standing, and they are moving. They are so nervous. The nervous energy that has been spent tonight as Gardner gets the second one. They've gone back to man. Tigers. And you see him right now. He's not only playing defense, playing cheerleader. 18 and a half seconds left. Overtime. KU needs two. Don't have a timeout left. Seven seconds. Down to six. Rush on the run. Dished it off. Stolen away by Jimmy McKinney. And the Missouri Tigers are going to win this thing in overtime. Got to make your free throws. Missouri did a great job of switching on the ball screen. And then Marshall Brown moves his feet. And he forces Rush to pass the ball. And good, solid awareness by Missouri out of the timeout. From the baseline and throw at the length of the floor. Two options. McKinney trying to make it a three-point ball game. He got it. Oh, don't touch the ball yet, Jackson. Oh, here we come. Shot is off. Missouri wins it. In overtime. Thomas Gordon. Boy, the kids are storming the floor, and it's a dangerous situation because Gardner is at the bottom of that pile. I know they want to celebrate with the young man, but somebody could get hurt. So our final score in overtime, Missouri wins it. 89 to 86. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Holly Rowe, Brad Frischella, and our retired ESPN crew, I'm Ron Franklin. Now let's send it out to the Carrier Dome. And Dan Schulman. Let's check back in. In the Big 12, Thomas Gardner and Missouri hosting rival Kansas under 20 seconds to go. Missouri down three. Jimmy McKinney, the hoop and the harm. McKinney, 19 points, free throw, no good. Tigers down two after Mizzou fouls. Kansas hit.
makes both free throws and needs a three to tie for Missouri. And Gardner is there. Career high 40. We're tied at 77. Chance for Kansas for the win. Christian Moody oh. fouled by Mario Chalmers with just four tenths of a second on the clock. 50% free thrower on this oh. season. Misses the first. Still with the chance to win it. Moody, the second. No. And we need overtime. In OT, it's Gardner. He's finding Marshall Brown, who throws it down for two of his 12. Tigers up one. Six lead changes in OT. Ten seconds to go. Kansas still with a chance to tie. Brandon Rush turns it over, and Missouri wins 89-86. Tigers 3-1. and one. I, when we, really at Duke, we, we, we spaced and we attacked off the dribble um and that that was you know i, I think the the, the strength you know, one of coach k's many strengths was his ability to adapt you know i think that's why he's had so much success you know over the years um you know when i got to the d league uh well at missouri you know we had we played more with two traditional bigs which was an adjustment for me given the fact that you know we were playing with a shooting four at Duke really very, very early, you know, whether it was Shane Battier or Mike Dunleavy. Um, and when I got to, to Missouri, we, we, my first year, we were more of a spacing team. You know, we had a six, four power forward. And, um, and then, you know, part of my evolution as a coach has been the opportunity to see different, different ways to play and different, you know, styles, uh, you know, in San Antonio, the, the first thing I had to do is try to learn, um, you know, their kind of fundamental core motion offense because that was um, the way that we wanted to play because we had Jan Mahimi. And More like dial in. Little things, I'm going to keep emphasizing it. It's one of the things that's most satisfying is just the teaching process. And to be afforded the opportunity to help someone get better at what they're doing to perfect their craft and to impact that is, you know, is something that's rewarding. That's hard to guard. You're going to hit him in the corner, you're downhill. It's good, Rich. I think everybody's worked to get better. It's been something that guys individually have taken pride in. We shouldn't have to flip. Okay, we get unders, we can pitch, we can get on the rim. And then eventually you start to see the fruits of some of those labors. And having some success gives you momentum and you want more. Good. Set it. Come on, eight. I want to go. I want to go. Yes. Good job, Donovan. Way to play it. Here we go. Here we go. Same. When we think of culture, I, I think of identity. And the identity that our team has, has we've tried to embrace is that as a, of a defensive team. We got to execute on D. We got to play at a high level and get stops. We get stops. You got to get it in your mind to attack the rim in transition. But teams are going under on Smith. There's a steal. Donovan knocked it away. Rudy wants it. Runs it down the floor. What? Giant step inside for the big man. Turnover. Picked up by Mitchell. Outlet to O'Neal. Gives to Ingles and he packs it with a left hand. Way to attack, go Good. This Utah Jazz team is as hot as any team in the NBA. It's going to be a team that nobody's going to really want to face in the postseason.